Lowerture, as many of you know, um, is, is um, you know, uh, just such a huge person in our world, uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander world, chairperson of ATSIC, um, so many other roles that she's played. And last night I mentioned that I've had the, the privilege of um, knowing and working with Lowerture for over 10 years now, both with the Indigenous Doctors' Association and now as the patron, but more importantly, I think, than the patron, the person who's gifted her name to the Lowerture Institute. So please join me in um, asking Lowerture to come up and say some words. Hi everyone, it just looks absolutely marvellous uh, to see you all seated here today and I guess we've got more to come. Thank you for being here uh, today, it's really lovely to see you and to see so many young people coming along because for a long time now I've been saying where are the young people, when are you going to step up to what's needed if we're going to advance our cause. Uh, and I just want to reinforce that today. And just a little bit uh, of my human history, I just want to say uh, to you all that some of you, of course, who are here, will remember me from ATSIC, the chair of ATSIC the disciplinarian of ATSIC. And you will never forget it. Uh, and so on, and I want to apply it also to this conference as well. Now, what I want to say to you is that we want to be able to hear you at this conference. Your speakers, you're here, and we want to know what you're saying as well. And as the chair of ATSIC, most of my senior officers were sent off to have speech therapy <laughs> because we couldn't hear what they were saying. Uh, and so I'm saying to you today at this conference, we want to hear what you have to say at this conference. And this is the beginning, not only for the older ones here, but also for the younger ones here. Be disciplined. I expect that you will be, and in terms of being able to hear you at this conference, I'm telling you to speak up so that we all know, uh, and so on, who, uh, uh, what you're saying. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the Kulin Nations on whose land we meet today. Thank you, Auntie Di Kerr, and also Mr. Giran Steele, wherever you are down there somewhere, for your warm welcome to country. And thank you, Romley, for uh, your leadership and for your introduction and so on today and so on. And we know that you're carrying a fairly heavy load uh, at this conference uh, and... Um, I'll help you if I can. Um, and of course, Ken White over there, I'll just speak about him. We're friends from way back. He knows lots of little bits and pieces and I hope that he won't tell you all <laughs> the little secrets of way back, but we do have them <laughs> and so on. So uh, thank you for coming because I know it's a very difficult time for you uh, in the parliament at the moment and to come here instead of being in the parliament, is really just something we thank you for. Good. So when I was first approached about the idea of an institute to be founded in my name, I'm afraid I was very... I wasn't very gracious at all. Pat will tell you about that. I remember complaining 
that having an institute and name after me would mean that half of the country would think that I was dead. <laughs> I remember complaining that having an institute named after me would mean that half of the country would think I was dead. I don't know if they still think I'm dead. <laughs> I've been out of the scene for a little while. But I feel very much alive and happy to be here with you sharing this moment. It is just beautiful to be out amongst uh, people I know and people that I don't know and will get to know in the next few days. And this is a very special moment for the Lower Institute for me personally. When I agreed to have the Lower Institute named after me, I entrusted in the Institute my spirit and energy, my values and priorities. I held them that I wanted them to be a courageous organisation committed to social justice and equity for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people to match words to action, to achieve real tangible and immediate outcomes. Alas, to be known throughout Australia as a strong and sustainable organisation. More than six years have passed since I, I charged the Institute with all that. And looking back at the work that it has done to date, and looking at all of you here today, I can say that I'm very proud of you. As I look at this room full of national and international delegates and think of all the work that has gone into bringing you here and all the work that you are about to do, I am particularly proud of you all. Not that that is any reason for you to relax. The future is in your hands and you, the Lowage Institute and its partners, friends and supporters, all of you still have a big job to do. The country has a big job to do, and I'm about to tell you what that job is. First, I want to remind you of the last few lines of a poem so many of us know and love, Song of Hope by Ujuru Nunakul known as Kath Walker. To our fathers, fathers, the pain, the sorrow. To our children's children, the glad tomorrow. I can't help thinking back to the 12 year old Lowager of the Colebrook home in Adelaide being told by the matron that I'd never amount to anything. I can't help thinking that it meant for me, of course, that of my life to be taken together with my sisters from my mother when I didn't see her for another 30 years. I can't help thinking of my struggle for an education, for the opportunity to train as a nurse and of how I became increasingly aware of the deeply entrenched disadvantage that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in this country. And the fight, the lifelong fight for social justice, for human rights, for our peoples. And I think the true leaders like Pat Anderson, who have fought by my side. Pat is energetic and fearless. She's a legend. I thank her for her leadership over the years and for taking her vision through to the formation of the Lowager Institute. I acknowledge the despondency that we sometimes feel and its negative social consequences. I honour the struggle 
the pain and the sorrow. But your job is to build the glad tomorrow. But your job, for your job is to work ceaselessly with confidence in who we are and our knowledge, timeless and modern, our endless strength and resilience and our capacity for work and our wise heads and our wonderful, talented youth. We must be fearless in our work for the health and the well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people. We must be fearless in our work for the Indigenous peoples of the world over. Now is the time that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people must take their rightful place at the heart of this nation. We have outstanding Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leadership organisation in this country. They are more than capable to guide the decisions that need to be made in a way that is true to our cultures and will therefore have the right outcomes. In order to empower our capabilities, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people must be at the centre of the decisions. We must work with government to get the job done. We want our non-Indigenous friends and colleagues to work with us, but it's important that we know when to step up and they know when to step aside. I entrust you all to deliver on this agenda for us. Although Pat is not able to be with us today, she and Romilly and I stand side by side and our global family to achieve the best for Indigenous peoples. So thank you very much and we hope we have a good week. Thank you.